Welcome to part two of the chair slipcover. In this video series, we're going to show you how to take the pattern you made earlier, take the fabric you want, and turn it into a professional, beautiful slipcover. So let's get started. So before we get started, we'll show you everything that you're going to need to complete the job. You're going to need a straight edge, a ruler, pencil, pair of scissors, and or electric knife if you have one. It makes the job a lot easier and faster. And of course, a fabric of uh, your choice that's going to make the slipcover look beautiful. Now, the order that we do it in is SP, as we did in the other video, is seat platform. IB is inside back. So this is the order we're going to uh, cut the slipcover in when we take the pattern off the chair there. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So let's keep it simple. Don't take everything off. The only thing we're going to take off at first is seat platform the inside back. These are attached. All I did is draw a pencil line right here. So let's take all our anchor pins out and then we're going to bring it over to the table. So what I want you to do is cut apart the seat platform the inside back. That's the first thing I want you to do. Now we're going to talk about the fabric. I'm just going to put these aside. We're going to talk about the fabric here. This is the fabric that we're going to use. And you've got two ways you can do this. You can do one that's called up the bolt. And that would be you're going to have the fabric going from salvage end to salvage end. And that's going to be on your piece of furniture. We're not going to do that. We're going to do what's called railroading. And that means that we're going to run the fabric this direction. So our up on the fabric is going to be, let's just say, toward me. If you have a pile and it has to go in a certain direction. Take your hand and run where the pile is. So the smooth side on, let's just say if it's a, a, a velvet, the smooth side has to go down. So let's just say the smooth side went down this direction. This would be your up. So don't mix that up. This doesn't matter. This is just a standard twill. It's very easy to uh, work with. I can tell what's the correct side. This is the wrong side of the fabric. This is the correct side. So we're going to railroad this fabric and we're going to show you how to cut the seat platform. So now the thing you want to do is look for any imperfections in your fabric, any runs, any pills, or whatever the, the, the case might be. You don't want that on your fabric. So now's the time to examine your fabric. Now we've already done that. This looks good. We're going to fold this fabric over. Now for simplicity's sake, we're going to make uh, U up. So the fabric doesn't have any pile. It doesn't make a difference. So we're going to railroad this fabric, like I said, and we're going to make this the up. So I'm going to fold this over. I'm going to grab my seat platform. Take the clean salvage end of your pattern. Now this is what was in the center of the chair. Put that on the fold. Smooth out all your wrinkles. And incidentally, do this on the, uh, uh, your dining table or something like that, because you're going to need some room. Obviously, I have this table that I use, but you're going to need um, a good amount of space. So you can try it on your, your dining table, maybe put a heavy blanket down or something like that so you don't scratch your table. Or, of course, you can do it on a, um, a floor. Uh, carpeting is not a good idea. It's going to give you too much give, and it's, it's not going to work right. But if that's the only thing you have, it's the only thing you have. So we're going to fold this fabric over. We don't want to use too much. Okay, so that's where a pattern really comes in. Um, handy as far as saving money on fabric. It's excellent to use the pattern. A little more steps, but you get to make multiple ones. And we don't waste as much fabric. So this is my widest point here, my seat platform. And I can even bring this over just a little bit more. Because all I'm going to need is a half inch. Smooth 
smooth everything out. Do not pin this down. Just let it naturally lay on your fabric. This is the bottom or where the skirt would be. This chair doesn't have a skirt. So this is a very easy slip cover to do. This is where the um, bottom of the chair is. And our skirt would come up a little bit higher past that. But since we don't have one, we're going to come past this red mark here that we did um, earlier in uh, part one of cutting the pattern. And we want to we want to make sure that the slip cover comes down past the the uh, chair. So if which I don't recommend, but if you want to do it, go ahead and do it. If you wash it, it shrinks up, uh, then you don't see your furniture. So there's a couple of different ways you can you can do this if you want. I like to leave about maybe two inches below the bottom of the chair. So if if you if you want to do less, you can do less. If you want to do more, you can do more. It, it's up to you. But you do want some room for any shrinkage because even dry cleaning, what I recommend, will shrink a slip cover a little bit. You can also do one other thing. We already have the pattern off the chair, but around the legs, let's just say the side of the chair uh, is here, okay, back leg, front leg. You can make a little mark with, um, I don't have a pencil right here. You can make a little mark, like say this was the, where the leg was, and you, you, could, you can hem this part up. Let this part hang down here, okay, let's just say there. You would leave enough, say, three quarters of an inch uh, for your hem, so you'd come down an inch and a half, fold it up three quarters, and then that, that would be your hem mark. So when you're finished folding up, you'd have three quarters remaining. My point is, is this. A lot of people do this, and it's very nice. If you're worried about shrinkage, you can put Velcro on uh, the, the hem part. This would be neatly hemmed around the leg when I say this. This would be neatly hemmed around the legs, just say about maybe, I don't know, half inch or something uh, hangs down because you don't want to see the cording of your upholstery fabric. And then this would come down, you would sew on Velcro. For those who don't know, Velcro comes in, in two ways. Uh, it's called hook is one and loop is the other. So you could sew either one, it doesn't make a difference. You could do the hook on, on the uh, slip cover or the um, loop. You can hot glue it on there underneath the chair. So let's just say this is the bottom of the chair. You can hot glue it on there, but it's best to staple it because when you pull that off, the hot glue may not stay. So if you can, staple it on there or even use um, upholstery tacks, which are kind of easy to come by. But for the slip cover, don't hot glue it. Sew that onto your, your, um, your hem or your flap. So when it, you fold it up underneath, there's a clean line on that slip cover and it looks really good. So that's one method you can do. Now the next move is, is you need to straighten up your uh, chalk mark. Uh, so it's a straight line at the bottom of the furniture there. That's what I did. I didn't follow that red. It, it went up a little bit. So I just cleaned that up a little bit. That'll be fine. You're going to make your half inch marks outside of uh, the line here. This, this here will meet the outside arm. And then I have a half inch mark up into this dart area and then a half inch mark here. Now this is where it gets a little bit uh, a little bit more tricky. You come up about two inches from your dart area. This particular piece here is, like I said before, a seat platform, but also a seat front. So the front starts right here of your chair, or this particular chair. So there's no band here, no, there's no sewing. This is all one long piece. This is the bottom of the chair, like I said earlier. So come up where this dart is, where it rolled over, we put that dart in there, roll over to the seat platform, come up two inches. That is where we start to make a, a, um, a gradual pull away for the tuck-in area of your seat platform. So we came up two inches from the dart, out half inch from our tuck-in area. Because remember, this just sat right in the crevice of the seat platform and where the inside arm meet. Just right there, that's all that says. Come out and then make a gradual um, mark up here. Not, not, not a gradual mark, you're going to make a gradual mark, but you're going to come out three inches up at the very end of the seat platform, right up here. And now the back of the chair is here. And we're going to do the same thing there, three inches there as well. So you just connect the dots. You take your straight edge, that's what this is for. 
you go to your half inch mark right there and you draw a straight line right there and a straight line here. So I'm going to take my electric knife, as I showed earlier, we're going to come down, or we did, we came down three inches from where the end of the furniture ends, or the end of the furniture is. We're going to cut this out, half inch, half inch, and then the gradual pulling away from the um, seat platform, which gives us our tuck end. Now let's do it. Now you see that I cut out the seat platform. I want to emphasize this one more time that your tuck in area, when we did the three inches out here and three inches out there, it, it starts to gradually uh, pull away from the seat platform and come straight out to, from the seat platform. This is the tuck in uh, in the back area. And then this here is the uh, drop for the hemming at the bottom of the chair. Now we got the inside back uh, down on the fabric here. And uh, what we need to do is make a mark from your pencil mark at the top of the, um, of the inside back down to the point where the tuck-in starts on your chair. So up at the very top, there's no tuck-in, so that's just going to be a half inch. But as it comes down, the tuck-in starts. That's where we need to come down on our pattern here. So I measured it. It's three inches. So I took my tape measure, made a mark at three inches down here. So I want my tuck-in to start. You start out at a half inch. Come down to the bottom of your pattern. My pencil line is here over three inches. And at the bottom, which is my pencil line that I've cut off earlier, down three inches from there. I connect the dots and I'm going to simply cut this out and that's it. Okay, so now we are going to take the inside back. I pinned it together here. And we're just going to set that on top of the seat platform. Our next move now is going to be the inside arm and the inside wing taking the pattern off the chair over here. So we'll go over here and just take all these pins mm -hmm. out. The only part you want is this and this, and we're gonna put that on the table. So before we take this completely off and put it on the table, I wanna give you a, uh, another look at where the tuck end goes. This is the inside wing, inside arm. So when we get on the table, you don't get too confused. What we're trying to do is take this line here, that you can see, and we're going to add the tuck in there, and that's, that's what needs to go inside there when the slip cover is completed. So it just gives you another look at what we're doing. Okay, so now you see I have the inside wing and the inside arm on the fabric. And what I did is I went up above where we were cutting the seat platform and the inside back because there's no sense in wasting this fabric up here. So this is where our little stain was, so I didn't even have to go near there yet. We just went up to this fabric over here. And that's what makes the pattern so great because you can use a minimum amount of fabric as possible and get the job done. So with the inside wing here, we need to come out two inches here. And I'm going to try to explain the, the, uh, the representation of each piece here, meaning that the tuck-in is here. This is where the cording is that meets the inside arm which is right here. Now I know it must be a little confusing, but it does make sense once you start putting it down on the table and trying to figure out the pieces. You, you, you'll, you'll definitely get it, there's no doubt. So you got two inches out here for your tuck in. You got two inches out here for your inside wing tuck in up at the top. I showed you that a moment ago. And then you have your tuck in for the inside arm that extends downward. So just imagine that this was pulled down here like it was on the, on the chair. And the inside arm sits here. It's a half inch here, simple little half inch there. But right here, what do we do? We need tuck in. That's why we came out past this two inches. This here will wrap around the inside wing, that is. This is only a half inch. This will attach to the outside wing. So once you start laying this out, it's going to be easy. You're going to get it. It's going to make sense. Hopefully it already is. Now over here, I don't know if you can see it or not. Hopefully you can. It says add extra three quarter. And that was because this seat has a lot of give, a lot of spring. I felt as if I got a little too close. Another benefit of the, of the pattern, you can make marks and add. So normally I would just taper it off to about a half inch right here, but I want more. I said add extra three quarter inch. So I need a, still a half inch to sew, but I want an extra three quarter. So I came out an inch and a quarter. So what I want you to do is make your marks from your inside arm, 
at the very top where it meets the wing, two inches. Come down here, this is going to be your seat platform. This is attaches here where my ruler is. This imagine your seat platform here. You want three inches. So two down to three and connect the lines. You're going to come down to where I marked the dart is on the seat platform and come out just a half inch. And on the inside wing, two inches here, half inch here, half inch on everything else. And it will make sense, especially when we start sewing this and putting it together. So that's the marks that I made. I needed an extra three quarter, and we're going to cut it out right now. Okay, I want to give you a quick little recap. When it's cut, it might be easier for you to understand. The inside wing here, this is the bottom of the inside wing, and this is the top of the inside arm. Give you a little visual. Basically, it's going to be sewn like this. And you can see how these lines uh, meet and mesh up. So this is the top of the wing there. So you can see this on uh, my right hand here. The dart's going to be sewn there. It's going to be sitting on the inside arm there. So we have our tuck-in area of the inside arm here. The three inch down which connects to the seat platform. The dart for the inside arm. I came out a little bit more where I wanted to. I needed some extra fabric there. And we're coming right along. So now the next move is going to be, we're going to use the outside arm, which is one long piece, and then the outside back. Those are the next two pieces, and we're going to do some cording too. So we're going to grab the inside or the outside arm on the chair, bring it over the table, look for imperfections, avoid those, and get the outside arm cut. Now that we rolled out the fabric, I looked for more imperfections over here. I didn't see anything. So what we're going to do is just cut this off. I think we're going to cut this out. That's those little pins, the imperfection there. We're going to use this for cording. So this is not a waste, but since we need two outside arms, we're not going to have enough fabric. This is kind of useless here, but with cording, it won't be. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to clean this up, cut this, cut this out, and then put this aside for possible cording. Okay, so as you can see, I have the outside arm, laid it down here. The only thing we're going to do for the outside arm and the outside back is add your three inches, because this is the bottom of the uh, chair here, and th that's the only extra you add. This is all going to be your standard half inch, all the way around. Same thing for the outside back. Now, the arrow is facing up because we made this fabric. There's no real up or down on this fabric. We're railroading it. We made this part up. And now you see that these arrows are coming together, so obviously this is upside down. It is okay because you're not going to really be able to tell anyhow. It'll, it'll be fine. It'll be perfectly fine. It saves a little bit on fabric because if not, I'd have to come over here and find that because find a, a place for the outside back, and then this would be wasted. Do not do this if you're using a velvet because it does have a pile. It does have a shine or a sheen or whatever you want to call it. And you can tell that it's upside down. Don't do this. You're just going to have to uh, move your outside back over and do it properly. So remember, if you're using a velvet, the, the soft, smooth pile goes down. And you want that to go down on the outside back, down on the inside back, and down or out on the seat platform. So that's the way you use a velvet. But this twill, it doesn't make a difference. It's going to go upside down, and uh, it, it'll be perfectly fine. So if you have a print or a velvet, do not do this. And you're going to have to put it on the fold, by the way. But don't do that. So make sure you, um, you uh, pay attention to that. Now, I rolled it out. And I did find a, a slight imperfection. I didn't like it. So I rolled out some more. And guess what? Here's another one. Now, this is obvious. Uh, I don't know what that is. But nonetheless, they saw it and put an arrow. So you will see sometimes uh, tags, plastic tags. If you see a lot of those, if you're in a fabric store, stay away from it because there's little like tags that hold on, uh, the little um, plastic um, uh, fasteners that hold on tags, I should say, for your, your furniture in a store. They'll just use the fastener. And they're saying this thing's loaded with imperfections. So it's a courtesy, but you're taking your chance. I would stay away from it if you're finding a lot of these tags. They use a sticker, or a lot of these fasteners, they use a sticker to indicate the imperfection here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it out. I've already made my marks of three inches down here, half inch all the way around, and we're going to get going. Now we're going to move on to our cording. And the way I want you to do your cording is cut it on the bias. Now we have the piece that had the imperfection. There's no sense in throwing this out. So what I want to do is show you 
different ways that you can cut your cording. You can do it on the on the uh, straight, running it across here, the full length of the fabric. This one happens to be 60 inches from salvage to salvage, or you can run it up. So you can really use your cording in any direction you want. However, you're running the risk of what's called snaking on the cording, where if you ever see a cushion with the piping or cording, because some people call it piping, where it runs like this, then that's probably because it's not cut on the bias. So what we want is to cut on the bias, you find a salvage, and you would run it up or cut it up this direction. Because you'll see the stretch in the fabric this direction. Not as much this direction and not as much this direction. That will reduce your snaking. So what we want to do is take our fabric and fold it up this direction. Try to split it evenly here and here. And maybe a little small crease there. This is the wrong side up. And you can fold it over like this. And we're going to cut off of this side here. Now I did measurements and I recommend you do the same thing. Why make more than you need? So I took the pen marks, uh, that is the stick pens that are centering the furniture and you just double everything. So I went from the seat platform, measured on over to the outside back, came up with that figure. Same thing with uh, the outside arm going up and then up around the wing, came up with that figure and doubled it because obviously we have two sides. So I came up with 330 inches, divide that into 36 to get yards. I'm going to round it up to 10 yards because it's like nine and a half or something, nine and a quarter yards. So let's just do 10 to be safe. And what I want you to do is take your ruler and get your pencil, which I have over here, and we're going to go up three quarters of an inch from your fold area. So I got my fold, my crease, I'm trying to get one at least right here. You're going to come up three quarters of an inch, make your mark, make a mark down here three quarters of an inch, get your straight edge, and make your mark, connecting those two marks. Now I want you to take this line and go over an inch and a half. And the reason why we did three quarters is because it's folded. So when we cut this and open it up, it'll be about an inch and a half. It's very important to make it an inch and a half, and I'll explain that a little bit later. So I'm going to come over here and do inch and a half, inch and a half, go from that mark, inch and a half, inch and a half, connect the two marks. Do the same for the next one and keep on going until you come up to 10 yards. That electric knife makes it a lot easier. You can do it with scissors, but it's faster if you can get one. I'm going to show you the type of cordings I want you to use. There's two that we use here in the shop. This one here is what we just call a, a paper cording or an upholstery cording, and it's 530 seconds. That's the size I want you to buy. That's a standard size. But I don't want you to use this in your slip cover because if you decide to wash it, which I recommend dry cleaning, this paper is going to fall apart. And I don't even know how it's going to perform dry cleaning. So you're going to use what's called mop cording. Let me show you what that is. Is this what you want, Buzz? <laughs> That's it. That's definitely it. So while I untangle him and show you what this is about, then um, we'll, we'll take it a little further. So this is the mop cording that I was talking about. And the reason it's called mop cording because it looks like the strings that are on a mop. It's made up of cotton, and it's just uh, cords here uh, twine or twisted together and it makes the uh, complete cording. The size here is 530 seconds. And this will withstand moisture from washing and dry cleaning where obviously, as I said before, the paper cording is not going to. Now there's different types of cording you can buy, but these are the only two we use, and these are the only two I recommend. I can uh, give you a website where you can buy this, but you're gonna have to buy a whole spool of this. Hopefully you can find a place to get you the amount you need, but most suppliers are gonna wanna sell you a whole spool. It's not that much money, and you can do multiple slip covers with it. So that's what I want you to get. Now we got everything completed. I want to leave you with some ending thoughts. So a quick recap is the outside back, the inside back, and the seat platform, those three pieces get folded over. So here's the outside back just as a quick example. You can see it's folded over to make one outside back. So remember to put your salvage end of your pattern on the fold. Now the inside wing here, it's doubled, but not on a fold. So remember that. Now a quick fun tip, some people do and they like it, is you can make all your cording, say like maybe a light tan and the fabric being white if that was your choice. Or you could do all the outside 
in a different color. Maybe the tan, the inside white, or outside white and the inside tan. It doesn't make a difference. It's your choice. You can do what you want with it. So we hope you enjoyed this video of do you know what to do? And I think you do now what to do with your pattern. Thanks for watching.